Alright guys, so today I am replacing the rack and pinion on my 2001 Grand Am again. This time I'm going to make it an instructional video, as many of you commented on my time lapse. Um, it's been maybe a year and a half or so, and uh, same thing happened on the passenger side. The bracket that holds the rack and pinion down to the car. Um, broke again. So today I'm going to be replacing the whole rack and pinion um, along with the outer tie rods. I might be doing both wheel bearings just because I have them and I'm going to replace them anyways so we'll see. All right uh, on to the next. So one. first step obviously jack up your car, get it secured, take the tires off and then there's not really like any what do you call it, like, instructional way to do this. So I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start with taking off the outer tie rods and then I'll go from there. I'm sure I'm gonna have to do something, I forget what all I have to take out, but I know I'm gonna have to, it's kinda hard to see and I kinda lighten that up. There we go. Uh, I'm going to have to remove that, and then, which is the, uh, what, I forget the technical term, but it's like the um, connection from the steering shaft to the rack and pinion, and then uh, the hoses, and then the brackets, and then essentially it comes out. So, I think I have to loosen the back part of the uh, front subframe. Um, to get a little more clearance, but uh, we'll see. All right, on to the next step. All right, so I just took off the, uh, uh, not on the outer tie rods. Uh, typically, depending on where you are in the world, um, they'll come off pretty easy. But if you live in a rusty state, uh, you might have to use some heat or some other extreme forces. <laughs> Um, but that's a 19 millimeter castle nut. There should be a, um, why am I forgetting the names of things today? A pin of some sort in there. You take that out, take the nut off, and then uh, just remove it. The uh, tie rod actually got bent from it not being attached. You can kind of see. Here, let me zoom in and get a little brighter here. <clears throat> but you can see that bracket there is what broke off. Um, and that's the reason of replacement today. Fun. Right, so the next portion, I'm removing the uh, bolt. That truck. I'm removing the bolt. Um, to the intermediate shaft to the rack and pinion and then that'll separate those and then next I'll do the line so we got that part off um, the bolt was 11 meter millimeter sorry and I just used a flathead screwdriver on the let me see on this side here pried it up and it came right off so on to the next step. I forgot to record the me after the next step <laughs> um, but as you can see, I got the rack and pinion out. Um, I used an adjustable crescent, crescent wrench. My, my helper here. Um, <clears throat> to get the hoses off. And then also, as you can see, kind of bent the tie rod a little bit. And then, you can see I had to lower the subframe a little bit. These bolts are 13 sixteenths sockets and then there's four little guys back here that are 15 millimeters and they just come out and then um, I didn't take them all the way out because they're kind of a pain to put back in but just enough room to get your hands in there to get the hoses off and then I'll go ahead and install the new one so I haven't really cleaned it yet but you can see I got the lines back on there and then right here, where one mount is, 
and that's a 19 millimeter. Um, and then, I don't know if you can see the other side here. And that's, oh, come on now. Get the light in there. That's an 18 millimeter. Um, and it's easier to get it on the other side here, but anyways. So, got those in, and then I'm going to actually attach the steering shaft before I raise that back up just way I have more room in there to get that and then I'll raise this back up and then uh, put the outer tie rods in and we're done and that's that right Evie bub All right. so I got everything in uh, the most important thing to do is while the vehicle is still in the air you start it up <coughs> take this cap off make sure it's filled and uh, Turn the steering wheel back and forth to get all the bubbles out of the system and then you lower the vehicle and you do the same thing until you don't see any bubbles coming out and then you should be good um yet again it's dark when i finish my video so uh that'll be all um it took me about four hours leisurely -lee. maybe it was four hours i think it was more three started at one 40 now. Now it's 5 something. Well, anyways, <clears throat> it's not a huge job. It is something that uh, can be a pain if you run into problems, but should be good. And I will see you next time. Bye!